Hey, Aaron, welcome. What an amazing start to DevNet Create 2021. I was so excited to see all of that uh, that we just covered in the keynote. Um, I wanna just talk a little bit about some of what we saw because I really was excited to hear uh, some of what Grace shared with us. First, it was great to meet her. I know for a lot of you, this is your first time meeting Grace and it was so awesome to have her as part of this community now and helping us guide where we go forward in, the, in this organization. Uh, but we also talked a lot about what was accomplished over the past year, and it was so awesome seeing all of that work you've all been doing, taking these skills we've been talking about for years and putting them into action to help change things for good. Driving tech for good is one of the common themes you're going to hear across the entire event this week. Uh, so it was great to hear some specific examples of things you did to help your communities and people around the globe. Uh, it was also great hearing some of the future technology stuff that's coming out. Uh, some of the, uh, I'm a security geek at heart, so things like API security are really near and dear to me. It's the intersection of my, my career-wide focus on security and my uh, time spent in software development. So hearing uh, from Carlos about what we're doing in that space and some of the innovation that we're driving was really great to hear. And I'm looking forward to more sessions throughout the week that are gonna cover that as well. But then also hearing about things like full stack observability, which you've probably started hearing out in the market, but put a little finer point on what exactly it means to you and why as a developer you should care about it. So it is great to have all of that content come together. And then lastly, but definitely not least, uh, we've been working since 2019, since we launched the initial DevNet certs. And it is so excited to see all of that work come together uh, when they announce the actual launch of the DevNet expert certification. So I'm so excited. There is another session coming up shortly where you'll be able to hear more about it. But that is such, such a great recognition of all of that this community does. It's a way to now show that and formalize it in the form of a certification. So I hope you stay tuned after this session to hear more about that and hear what's in store for you if you do want to pursue that. So next up, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't met me, I am Eric Thiel. I lead developer experience for Cisco. And this is now my fifth DevNet Create. I was, I've been at every single one of them now. And this is such an honor to be able to sit here and see all the progression we've made. You know, we started out as a very small community uh, local event and to be able to reach the whole globe now. And last year was our first virtual event. This year we decided it was so successful, we brought it back again. And being able to follow the sun and reach you all and make sure you can all actually attend and view the content that you're interested in live including hearing a lot of regional content that might be relevant to you and your geography. It's just so great to be able to be a part of this. And for the first time, I actually get to host uh, my favorite section, which is the recognition and the demo jam. So in this area next, we're gonna talk about some of the cool things you've all built. We're gonna show you and let you show your work and what you've done. And then we're gonna recognize some of the members of the community that have been out there and helping grow the community help develop those skills in people and help them understand how they can grow their career, uh, grow their own personal skills, and then also turn around and give back. So we've had people that have attended, received some of that training, and then turned around and started giving it back as well to the community. So it's so awesome to be able to recognize everyone uh, as part of both of those segments. And I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this year's Demo Jam. Welcome to the Demo Jam for Asia Pacific, Japan, and China. It is so great to be here, and it's so great this year to actually highlight specifically what's been happening in your region and be able to showcase some of the stuff that people have been driving, some of the innovation, some of the cool projects they've been building. So we've got a great set of demos for you this year to showcase some of that. Thank you everyone else that submitted them. We would love to have included everything, but please do keep sharing your work. Publish it out on GitHub share it out on Twitter, get the word out there so the community can see the cool work you're doing, build on it, you can bounce ideas off each other and improve it and iterate it. It's such a great opportunity to bring it all together. But I wanna highlight a few of them that came in that really stood out to us this year. The first one I wanna talk about is from Lin Jian, who set out to figure out, is there a better way to get visibility into his applications when he's running on top of uh, Kubernetes? So he looked at some of the technology that we have at our disposal, things like Thousand Eyes, and said, is there a way that I can actually embed that and actually provide great visibility as I'm spinning up workloads to figure out how things are performing and really provide developers with the right set of resources to be able to very quickly analyze and see how their application is working. So let's go ahead and roll that demo and see what he built. Hi, I'm Lin Jian. 
I'm working as a software engineer in Cisco DevNet. My demo today is for SoundEyes Kubernetes operator. I believe some of you have played SoundEyes for network performance monitoring, UI testing, and so on. As I'm working on cloud native applications, I built this SoundEyes Kubernetes operator, which is a software extension to Kubernetes. With this operator, we can manage SoundEyes tests automatically instead of going to dashboard manually. Second, it allows us to manage SoundEyes tests using custom resources. Last but not least, in addition to use custom resources, we, when we define the Kubernetes ingress or service, we can also add SoundEyes annotations to its YAML files. It will also create SoundEyes tests to service exposed service or ingress endpoints automatically. Now let me show a quick demo. In this demo, I will create a page load test using custom resource to monitor DevNet homepage. Here's the demo flow. As I have installed this operator in my uh, Docker desktop Kubernetes, so first I will define a page load test custom resource, then deploy it to my Kubernetes. Once this resource is created, this operator will create a page load test in SoundEyes dashboard to monitor DevNet homepage. Now let me go through my custom resource. This is a custom resource for page load test, and the metadata name is also the test name. We can spe specify all the settings of this test in spec field. All these fields in spec match exactly the settings defined in SoundEyes. As you can see, our target URL is a uh, DevNet homepage. The interval is five minutes as well as HTTP interval is. And I also add, added New York and Singapore as our two cloud agents. And I alert, uh, added one alert row for it. Now let me run kube control command to apply this resource. Yes, this resource has been created. So we can go to the dashboard and refresh this page. Yeah, we can see our test has been created successfully in this dashboard. This operator is also available on uh, Cisco DevNet Code Exchange. You can search Kubernetes. Uh, you can search SoundEyes Kubernetes operator in Cisco DevNet Code Exchange for more details and play with it. Thank you. Next up, I want to hear from Raghul, who looked at a plethora of information we have inside of Cisco and thought, how do we actually access this in a meaningful way? And how can we simplify it so that people can very quickly get to answers when they need them? Uh, it's a very daunting problem. It's something and probably a lot of you struggle with inside of your organizations is information sprawl and finding easy ways for people to access. So let's hear a little bit about what he built and how he was able to actually leverage some really cool technology to simplify that access to a lot of information in a hurry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to DevNet Create. Now we are going to see a demo jam session about the SkyBridge project. I'm Rahul Prashant, Senior Network Consulting Engineer working in Cisco. So before SkyBridge, what we do, how we were doing manually and how SkyBridge helps us in automation. So we consulting engineer who are solving issues for customers. We understand about what the issue is, what about any bug guy or any issue. Like we search it in our internal tool with a bug ID, for example. We, it will have a lot of email communications archived, which is already discussed by consulting engineer by us between and the engineer or the developer of owner of the bug from engineering team. So we have to manually go through each of this link by clicking on it. And this is a UI. Once you click on each link, this UI will be there where you have to go through what the discussion is about. Sometimes you might not get the information even after going through all these discussions. Then you have to write manually a new email or a new communication to the owner of the issue or owner of the bug or a developer of the bug. So 
why have to we manually go through all these archived data and why have to manually we have to trigger an email? Why can't we automate it in this digitized world? So all the archived email communications are cleaned, tagged, and digitized, right? So in our SkyBridge platform, we just need to ask a question, whatever we have, and put our say issue bug ID. It will search for already existing question and answer in the database, and it will give you the proper answer what you are looking for. So we will bucketize it into three category in the database. So it all the questions and the answered, right? Whatever already answered in one bucket, questions already asked but not answered in other bucket, and no such questions asked in the other third bucket. So whenever you come to a SkyBridge platform, you ask a question with the issue, it will search where the question is already asked and answered, then you will get an answer directly. If already asked but not answered, it will again trigger an email to a, a owner of the issue, automatic email. If no such question asked, again, it will trigger an email and the question will capture in the database. So these three categories we have and how we are doing this, yeah, we have TF-IDF vectorization and custom keyword weighted vectorization. To search on a question you asking to the database and then matching similar questions and answer to popping up back to you. So after SkyBridge, you just put a bug ID with a question you have, you will be able to see the similar question asked with the answer. If no questions already asked, it will automatically trigger an email and it will show you saying, okay, the question has been triggered to a developer of the bug. Now you will, uh, no answers found now, but you will be able to get a response once the database get a response. So now with just few seconds, you need to just put your bug ID and question, you will get, let, the rest of the platform will do it and you will get an answer immediately in a few seconds. So we are saying a lot of time resulting in OPEX savings and also improved customer experience. Thank you for this quick demo jam session. That was a great demo from Ragul about how he was able to leverage AI and ML to bring together a lot of information uh, into an easy to access manner. So thanks for sharing that. Next up, we have Papita who looked at uh, a product, in this case, WebEx messaging, but it could apply to just about anything, anything with an API. And she thought, what if I wanted to actually customize user experience? Can I build my own front end and leverage the back end APIs to really tailor the experience to what I'm looking to experience with that application or with that product or that solution? So she was able to use some technologies like Angular to really reproduce a custom front end, exactly what she was looking for. Let's see how that all came together. Welcome all, I'm Papita. I'm a software engineer passionate about product development and I find website development very interesting. So here uh, I'll be presenting you all an interesting website, which is very similar to WebEx, but with a different look. So this session is about recreating WebEx with WebEx SDKs. So before we get into the demo, so I would like to give you all an intro of why and how this website was developed. This website was developed as a part of web dev code event that was conducted in our Cisco site. And in that hackathon, my team name was Mindbogglers. Therefore, we named the website as Mindbogglers WebEx. And this was developed by three members, myself, Saramnabhavan and Sumit. We had an awesome time doing it. And the highlight is that we just took three days to develop it. And this was built using WebEx SDKs in Angular. So the time taken just shows how simple it is to integrate the WebEx SDKs and the OAuth client provided by the developer portal into any web application. So now let's get into the demo. Here is our website. And for login purpose, we have used the OAuth client. And this OAuth client was created using the Cisco developer portal. And um, this app is similar to WebEx, but with a different look. So we have some of the features supported by WebEx, like we can list out spaces alone, and then we can list out the direct messages and also we can create a space from here and add members to it and we can initiate a chat with anyone from here 
and um, we have listed out the UI in such a way that it lists the date, time and uh, proper messages so we can send and receive messages. We can also start a call directly from here and if suppose we forgot to add any member and we want to add it in later stage then we can go here and add people so this will list the participants in the space and we also have a video calling option and we can also leave the space and finally we can also do the calling from here and at last we have the logout option so these are the features that we were able to integrate in just seven days. So imagine how much can be integrated in a long run. So uh, to explore more about this, please do visit developer.webex.com. It's an amazing website with wonderful resources. So finally, thank you all for listening and enjoy your other DevNet sessions. I love seeing that demo from Pepita, not just because it's using a cool front end, building your own front end, to an application that you might want to customize yourself. But what they were able to accomplish in just seven days was amazing. That's a great inspiration for me to figure out, hey, maybe I should go try something out, see what I can do. And if I actually sit down and try it out, I can be successful too and, and really build something cool in a short amount of time, leveraging all the resources at my disposal. So the last one I want to show you today is from Jinji. Jinji was looking at, you've been hearing a lot today about full stack observability and how you can actually gain more insights into your applications. So Jinji set out to do exactly that uh, with a book info app where he could actually get extra information about what was happening with the application through a number of different levels uh, of observability. So let's go ahead and see what he put together. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Xinji. I'm a backend developer and I'm responsible for building microservices and cloud native platforms. This session is about cloud native application observability using Cisco App Dynamics and Thousand Eyes. Bookinfo is a sample application composed of four different microservices. It is originally created as part of Istio project to demonstrate various Istio features and we extended to demonstrate observability of cloud native application. In the book info app, each microservice is instrumented with app dynamics agents to enable application monitoring data. And for the product page and web endpoints, the HTTP monitor is con configured in the thousand eyes that can monitor response time av availability and the throughput from multiple different regions in the world. So let's look at the demo. You can see from my screen, there are two key files, and one is the app.yaml. You need to configure your access key and the account info. And the book info contains all the configurations to deploy the services for the app. For the app. So let's deploy in my local cluster. So let me pop forward the app. Then we can access it locally. Let me try to access various pages that will trigger app dynamics agent to collect and send the metrics to the controller. And now we can check the, the metrics in the dashboard. And I need to use ng-rock to expose the service to internet. So Okay, let's add the other test in thousand eyes. So the test is added in the thousand eyes. You can 
you can check the metrics in the dashboard. And that's all from me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that demo. Jinji, thank you for sharing what you built. And hopefully it provided some inspiration for other people of ways that they can actually start exploring and building extra observability into their applications to really help improve the overall experience proactively. I hope you really enjoyed this demo jam. There were some great demos. If you want to find more information, you can always go to developer.cisco.com. You can find samples of a lot of these out in Code Exchange and Automation Exchange. And you can find all of these folks on Twitter, on social media. Go look them up and find if you want to talk to them about what they built and get ideas for maybe something you can do yourself. Thank you all for joining the demo jam. All right, this is now my favorite part of the whole event. It's where we get to recognize the DevNet creators. These are folks that have been nominated by the community and have been out there doing things like sharing their knowledge, helping build the community up, helping people when they're stuck on a problem or sharing the innovations that they're driving. They're out there every day participating, helping make sure people are ready for this digital transformation that we're all going through and have the right skills necessary to be successful and to grow their careers and to grow as people. So we love seeing all of the nominations. We wish we could recognize everyone, but we do have to pick a few. So this year I would like to uh, recognize and award our DevNet creators. First up is Umesh Chaurasia. Umesh is a strong contributor to the Cisco developer community with two community spotlight awards for his continued support for collaboration developers. The company Umesh helped start, Parsec Telesystems, is a highly active solution partner who delivers collaboration and contact center solutions using Cisco programmability. In his spare time, Umesh loves reading and loves to help can give back to the community. So Umesh, we really appreciate all that you've done for the community this year, and we look forward to seeing a lot more in the future. Thank you for everything that you do. Next, I want to recognize Manasobu Yoshi. Yoshi-san's work has been transforming the way HR and engineering teams work together. His contributions to the NTT group has enabled and influenced outcomes in the network industry as API and programmability business opportunities. Yoshi-san's effort has also contributed to NTT Field Techno and has helped prove that his company is a highly skilled software and programmability engineers, which contributed to winning the ninth Japan HR Challenge Award. Yoshi-san, we want to thank you for everything that you've been doing for the community. Continue helping drive that skill set out there, helping make sure people have the right skills to automate, to program, to integrate, to do new cool and innovative things with software and infrastructure together. Thank you for everything that you've done. And again, thank you to the whole community. We appreciate everything that you've all done. We look forward, as always, to your continued contributions. Thank you for being out there. Look for these folks on social media. Look for them out in the community. Thank them, congratulate them, and think about ways that you can give back as well. We'd love to see your name nominated next year as well as someone that's really been giving back to the community and helping everyone out. And also, thank you to all the demo jammers. Thank you for such great sharing such great bits of code. I love seeing it. I love seeing the innovation and just trying new things out. The whole idea of exploring technologies even if it seems silly up front, it unlocks so many capabilities when you first just explore and try something out. And then you can actually leverage that for something that may be really impactful down the road. So don't shy away from just doing those fun little pet projects or those little creative things around the house because you never know when the skills you develop might actually come in useful or even just the code that you built might come in useful for something that you need to do at work or you need to do to help uh, someone in need. So thank you all for that as well. I appreciate you sharing it and look forward to another year worth of innovation ahead as we, as we head into 22 and beyond. So now what to do next? Well, I appreciate all of you that are out and active in the communities. I want to make sure you continue to engage with us throughout the year. Obviously, this event is a great opportunity to, to share information, but throughout the year, we're always active out on community.cisco.com. And I encourage you to all participate Come share your insights, answer questions, be part of that community. It's a great way to meet other people that are trying to do similar things to you and actually share your ideas. So great place to meet people when you're looking to just interact with peers. Uh, but then also uh, keep tuned into our blogs. We've got a great set of developer-focused blogs on blogs.cisco.com slash developer 
where you can actually watch and see what the latest technologies are that the team's playing around with, the developer advocates, and especially like trying new technologies out and documenting what, what they've found with it. But across Cisco, there's a lot of people that are working on developer interesting topics, and they share that out on the blog. So it's a great place to stay in tune with what is on the cutting edge of things. Uh, and then lastly, keep an eye on our events. Well, this is our, our developer event for the year. We also do a ton of local events, regional events, virtual events, webinars, workshops, hands-on opportunities where we want you to come and get engaged and try things out and explore the technology uh, through, uh, through an interactive means. So please do keep an eye on all of those pages. Great opportunities to be part of the community, engage with us in an ongoing basis. And everyone you're gonna see over the course of this event, everyone from, uh, from our organization for the most part is fairly active on social media. So you can always track us down there too if you have questions or just wanna say hi. Now, what's in store for you the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the event? Um, so one cool thing I wanted to call out is, is our approach to content this year. So thank you everyone that submitted content. We had a ton of awesome submissions, but this year we really wanted to rotate towards something Cisco has been doing, which is we set out and we made an innovation promise to our customers. And we outlined a number of different ways in which we are gonna ensure our technology is always innovative. We're trying to push new boundaries, but we're also trying to do so in reasonable ways, in good ways. And so as part of that, we laid out this innovation promise, and I thought that was the best possible backdrop to approach this event this year with. And so when you're going through all the content, you'll see it all groups into these five different categories that came straight from our innovation promise and how we're trying to build better products. So we wanted to share that back with the community of how can you build better products? How can you build more innovative products? How can you build more secure products? And so when you're going through all the content, one, if one or more of these is of, is of interest, you can kind of search for those topics. But the ones that we talk about are customer and user experience. Obviously, if you're building any product, any solution, you want to make sure that it's very customer friendly. It's got it's easy to use. It is equally accessible. You want to make sure that it is very easy for all people to use, not just a set of people if, if it's not equally accessible. Uh, simplicity and cloud first. Obviously, everyone is driving towards the cloud, and we are very supportive of that. We are working on that inside of our platforms as well, where we want everything to be cloud first. So you'll find lots of talks about cloud native technologies, ways of deploying things in the cloud, and things to think about when you're working in the cloud. Next up is visibility and automation. You heard in the keynote already, full stack observability. Observability is so critical right now, and it's on the top of everyone's mind because with so many businesses putting so many workloads in so many places, the information is, is very disjointed and it's very important to bring all of that together into business insights and business analytics and to overlay that with actual business metrics so you understand the implication of a website running slow or of a server going down. You wanna understand is that impacting your business or your application or something else? So that category is gonna have all kinds of insights about how you can build uh, solutions that have good visibility and uh, actually can leverage automation to do some of those tasks. Next up, security built in. So this has been key to Cisco for a very long time. We've always focused on building our, our solutions with security in from the ground up. But now we're sharing a lot of that ideas and we've invited the community to do, do the same. Share, how exactly are you building security in, into your applications? I saw a number of talks uh, in the agenda that I'm really excited for, anywhere from uh, how to protect keys when they're in memory, to how to actually automate and orchestrate security insights so that you can actually bring it together and act on it very quickly. So there's a great set of information out there that hopefully you'll find useful in that space. And lastly, interoperability and quality. So obviously when you're building applications, no application works in a vacuum anymore. You, it's important to make sure that it's very easy to interoperate with and it has a high quality and well-documented API so that when other people want to integrate with your applications, it makes it easy for them to consume and, and be a participant in that integration. All right, with that, I hope you have a great rest of your DevNet Create. I'm looking forward to a ton of great sessions ahead. We have four different channels that you hear, you'll hear about shortly from our hosts. And I look forward to hearing afterwards and during the event from you on social media, what are you liking? What, what ideas are you getting? And share with us what ideas you have going forward for what you can create and bring your APIs and apps to action.